Hello, my friends, and welcome back. <clears throat> As I often say, patience is a virtue. In this case, wait a little bit, and you're going to find uh, the truth coming from the mm -hmm. mouth of the person who was telling you something else a few days ago. So in this case, we have the um, Ukrainian military who informs us about Mariupol and Azovstal um, <clears throat> status, which means uh, they tell us that there is no way that those guys at this time could be rescued by the uh, Ukrainian military. And uh, we knew this, but it seems like the people trapped in there in the catacombs of Azovstal steel plants did not know that, or maybe they know it, but it's just a game played for us. I don't know yet. And why do I say a game? They, uh, the guys trapped over there, the commanders of the Azov battalion and whom, whoever is also trapped over there, they provide uh, <clears throat> very conflicting uh, information. And what I'm talking about is they, their plead to be rescued. And then they say with the other half of the mouth that uh, we have orders uh, to defend this uh, location being the last, uh, um, <laughs> I think they called it, the last um, Mariupol area held by Ukraine or something. You guys are dead meat over there. You don't hold anything over there. There's nothing to hold, not even your lives. Because these guys are going to do whatever they want with your life pretty soon. When you're, uh, um, you know, food supplies and water supplies were going to run out. What are you going to do? You're going to come out and they're going to look at you, each and one of you, and they're going to talk to you, if you know what I mean. And after they talk to you, they're going to figure out who's who, what's what. And then you never know what's going to happen after because a lot of hatred might have been built in the meantime, or it was already there, I guess. And then you're going to be put in front of the camera and you're going to say how great the Russian military and Russians are and how bad your uh, side is. That's how it always works. OK, and you're going to do it. And if you're not going to do it, they're going to help you. You know, they're going to help you, you know, and if you really don't want to do it, then you are of no use for them. So when you are of, of no use for them, guess what they're going to do or not what they could possibly do. They will exchange you for, <laughs> for other, with other uh, prisoners of war, correct? Yes. But who knows what we find uh, who was down there? I'm very uh, interested personally. Let's see. So this article comes from the new voice of Ukraine. So you can imagine. And this is the title. No way to break. No way to break Russian siege of Mariupol and Azovstal to rescue Ukrainian troops, says Deputy Defense Minister. This article comes from May 11th. And remember, now we're what? In May 13th. So they knew this more than two days ago. But nevertheless, the commander trapped over there in the Azovstal by someone's decision from Kiev or his own or both, they got trapped. Over there, they're not defending anything. They're trapped. So if they're over there, um, they knew. So they're pleading for, uh, oh, we're going to stay here until when? As I always say, who's going to come and help you? Mother Teresa, who's going to come and help you? She's gone already. So she, that option is not on the table. Your troops, do you hear what this guy is saying? And things, these things were solved, were clear for about three weeks or four weeks already? And then you ask Elon Musk and you ask uh, Bill Gates and you ask, uh, is the state of Israel yesterday to help the Jews that are trapped uh, as military, as fighters in the Mar Mariupol, Azovstal? Who are you going to start? I mean, the Pope, I can't call Elvis. Elvis is gone. So, oh my. So anyway, let's go here and see. We find out that uh, Maliar said that if such a counter-offensive, this must be a counter-offensive operation to break through the Russian siege of Mariupol where possible, it would already have happened. Public broadcasting company 
sus pln line sus pln reported and i'm quoting ukraine's armed forces are doing the best doing everything they can to resolve the situation maliar said the ukrainian defense operation in mariupol is conducted by the armed forces border guard units national guard soldiers and national police added maliar so they're all involved in this and um, there's some that uh, he doesn't mention because it's they can't do it yet but they, we want to find about who else is uh you know pushing with the shoulder a little bit there or a little bit more we should understand that this subject is very sensitive why is that each word may be used by the enemy to damage the morale of ukrainian defensive units well i think your information is uh, uh already or i don't you think that these guys trapped over there they don't communicate with uh, their control uh, centers do you think this they were not told this hey guys you're done now and if they're not why in the you don't come and rescue me it's time man it's late why why is that so uh, those guys figured it out they it's not a you know but anyway they have to say this so they calm the population and other uh ukrainian president zelensky on may 7th made a statement on azovstal a steel plant in mariupol where hundreds of civilians uh well this is uh the civilians sh uh, took shelters and in bomb shelters and which is the only remaining part of the city still under ukrainian control it's like you are in a you are arrested you are incarcerated in a cell and that is the only uh it's the, the remaining part of the world where you are which is under your control your cell no doesn't sound like that i was arrested i'm trapped and that's the, the cell is under my control guys yes <laughs> Zelensky said that humanitarian missions managed to evacuate as many as 300, 300 civilians and there are plans to uh, to go on and rescue wounded soldiers and healthcare workers. Yes, that's very nice. However, on May 10th, the Ukrainian leader said that Russia wouldn't agree to any of the efforts or offers made by Ukrainian side on rescuing the Ukrainian soldiers in Mariupol. Uh, no, they will not because they don't want those guys that they consider the russians consider to be a certain kind of group in the azov battalion to just go mocha you know scot free out and after they did what they did and whatever they defended their country they just go back and then they're gonna do the same thing or they're gonna as i say they're gonna be uh, airlifted and taken to a very nice uh, country like i don't know uh, Italy, let's go in uh, Tuscany, and so they're going to start, uh, um, I don't know, growing grapes uh, and vines and make wine for us. They're going to be just peasants and farmers, let's put it nicer. Really? So why would they? And besides, I think the Russians know more, um, I think, I'm pretty sure they know uh, more that of who else is in there. And I think that's a very good political um, card for them once they find those guys dead or alive unless i don't know what they, those guys can do um i don't want to i don't want to come uh, uh with some ideas i think they they have a, a wide uh, imagination anyway but you can easily you know take care of people so you don't know who's who what's what and you don't find anybody alive there but and uh all but one or most of them uh, you know you can't figure out who's who wants one at that point not by burning or anything but anyway uh they know what they're doing they uh, they're experienced people uh with this kind of stuff so thank you very much for being with me again today there's no chance as i said before these guys could be evacuated the way they want to be evacuated unless you surrender you either fight surrender or you just uh this or you just lay down because of uh lack of uh supplies Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just. See you in a moment.